Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. The topic of my lecture today about hirsutism. So what do we want to discuss today? Definitions, epidemiology, etiology, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, the work up for diagnosis of hirsutism, differential diagnosis, and lastly the treatment. Let us start with the definition. What does it mean, hirsutism? Hirsutism, excessive growth of terminal hair in women after puberty. This hair of male pattern, I mean, it affect the areas of skin under control of androgen hormone. Like that in the picture, the bird, the laps, is area of the skin affected by androgen hormone and the midline and chest, abdomen, inner side with the side, buttocks, back and the sacral region. Okay, so this is the hirsutism, which is excessive growth of male pattern, terminal hair in women after puberty. It affects facial and the body areas dependent on the androgen as I mentioned. So hirsutism affect between five to ten percent of women of reproductive age and more common in dark skinned individuals. Also it's commonly to occur in women who discontinue oral contraceptive Bill recently and who gain weight increasing okay why because obesity itself decreased steroid hormone binding globulin sex hormone binding globulin which leads to increased free testosterone and this free testosterone will cause hirsutism the most common cause of hirsutism is polycystic ovarian syndrome in children, if we found the hirsutism, this is a sign of precocious puberty. So, what is the etiology? The commonest, as I said, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It affects five to ten percent of women, and also twenty percent of adolescent girls. There is elevation, as you see in this picture, in LH. And there is increase of insulin due to insulin resistance, which is one of the main pathogenesis in PCOS. Increase LH will stimulate the ovarian sickle cell to produce androgen. Also, the insulin resistance increase the androgen and also suppress the hepatic production of sex hormone binding globulin leading to increased free testosterone. Hirsutism appear at puberty, accompanied by disturbance in the menstrual cycle, weight gain, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance, acne, and acanthosis negligence. Women usually present with hirsutism, oligomenorrhea, and infertility. Another cause of hirsutism is the androgen secreting the tumor. It is not a common cause. It represents 0.2% of all cases of hirsutism. These tumors are autonomous. I mean, it is not under the effect of hypothalamic pituitary axis. And 50% of these tumors are malignant. And what is very important to be known that the plasma androgen level is very high in case with adrenal tumor. They are also res res responsible for rapid onset of virilization. And if you examine by ultrasound, you will see pelvic or abdominal mass. Maybe adrenal tumor mass can be detected by ultrasound. Another cause is the non 
classical congenital adrenal hyperplasia. This is the prevalence of of congenital adrenal hyperplasia varies according to the synesthesis of the patient. More common in Ashkenazi Jewish population constitutes 3.7 percent in Central European population 2 percent in Caucasian it is lower most it is 0.1 percent why this happened this is a, a autosomal recessive disorder due to partial 21 hydroxylase deficiency and they represent the most common adrenal etiology of hyperandrogenism can be expressed after DP party by hirsutism, oligomenorrhea, acne, alopecia, primary amenorrhea, and fertility. If you did serum 17 hydroxyprogesterone, you will find that greater than 200 nanogram per deciliter, and this is diagnostic. Other endocrinopathy can lead to hirsutism like Cushing syndrome, hypothyroidism, or, hyper, or hyperthyroidism, hyperprolactinemia, and the acromegaly. They are not very common to cause hirsutism. Rare causes of hirsutism. Okay. Other causes include medications like danazole in this picture, like cyclosporin, like dazoxide, like phenytoin, like certain synthetic progesterone and glucocorticoids. Other causes of hirsutism including the pregnant woman because of excess prolactin secretion and the imposed menopausal woman due to decrease estrogen production by the ovary leads to a relative hyperandrogenism. What about idiopathic hirsutism? Idiopathic hirsutism is diagnosed by exclusion. So, you should see the patient with regular menstruation, with normal ovarian morphology, normal serum androgen level. Then, you exclude all other causes, so it is idiopathic. And it represents about 10% of all cases of hirsutism and the 50% of cases of mild hirsutism and should you should reassure your patient about that this has genetic determination and it is frequently reported in women of east indian and mediterranean origin what is the possible etiology maybe hypersensitivity of biospecies follicle receptors to androgen so there is Increased sensitivity of biosebaceous follicle receptors to antigen. Because you should know that hirsutism may be occurred due to increased antigen or increased sensitivity of biosebaceous follicle and the skin to circulating antigen. Okay? Okay, what about the path of histology? We should understand the hair growth cycle and we should know that the hair follicle in human about 5 million. In a scalp only 150,000 hair follicle. Okay? Okay. Look to this picture. This is the stages of hair growth cycle. This is the anagene, the catagene, the telogen. Anagen is the gross phase. This is a gross phase, and this in phase in facial hair continue for four months. Okay, that's why when you give the patient hormonal treatment for hirsutism, you should wait for six months because the gross phase itself only in the facial hair lasts for four months. Okay, so to see the response of any drug. We should wait for six months. Also, you should differentiate 
between terminal hair and the villous hair. Terminal hair is a dark, pigmented, coarse, long hair. Okay? While the villous hair is fine, soft, not pigmented. Okay? The number of hair follicles doesn't change over individual's lifetime. But the follicle size and the type of hair can change in response to numerous factors, particularly androgens. Okay, what is the sources of androgen in female? Three sources. One is the ovarian cica. Second is the adrenal cortex. Third is the end organs by peripheral conversion. So what are the different types of androgens? We know the hydroepandosterone sulfate and the hydroepandosterone. We know the androstene dione, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. And the post-testosterone and dihydrotestosterone has the highest affinity for the androgen receptor and the greatest potency, especially the dihydrotestosterone one, the most active one. And in healthy women, testosterone is largely bound to sex hormone binding globulin and albumin, leaving only approximately 1% free circulating testosterone. What about the biospecious unit? This unit expresses 5 alpha reductase enzyme, which convert testosterone to the most potent testosterone, which is called dihydrotestosterone. Okay? So this enzyme is very important because it converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which has high potency. Varying expression of enzyme activity within the pilus species unit leads to lack of clear correlation between serum androgen and the presence or severity of acne and hirsutism. There also may be a senic and the familial variability. So, the more the sensitivity to circulating androgen, the more the expression of hirsutism. So, it may be, may be severe hirsutism, but the amount of androgen is not proportional to this hirsutism. Why? Because there is another factor which is increased sensitivity of biospecious unit to any circulating androgen. Hirsutism is an androgen dependent disorder resulting from interaction between the circulating androgen level and sensitivity of the hair follicle to androgen. Skin and the biospecious follicle have an androgen receptor, as I mentioned. The skin can retain testosterone in a more active androgen, which is dihydrotestosterone. Through what? Through the enzyme 5 alpha reductase enzyme, of which there are two isoenzymes. Types type 1 in chromosome 5 and type 2 in chromosome 2 present in the skin and in the hair follicles. So Related to this enzyme, there is isoenzymes type 1 and the type 2 in chromosome 5 and 2 respectively. So how to diagnose? Start with comprehensive history taking and take for menstrual history, take medical history and a drug given to the patient any anabolic steroid or, st or testosterone, ask about the menstrual history, the cycle length and the duration, frequency. Also ask as of the age of monarchy and adrenarchy and the telarch. Okay. Ask about the time and the progression of acne and the hirsutism history of rapid onset virilization like deepening or harshness of voice 
Frontal folding is more concerning for androgen secreting tumor. Also, a family history of hirsutism or severe acne or polycystic ovarian syndrome or obesity should be recorded. There are many symptoms associated with hirsutism. You should ask about it. The acne, the menstrual irregularity, the temporal recess, as in this picture, temporal recession, and the hairline uh, of hairline, as in this picture, and also frontal alopecia, as in this picture. So, in this picture, there is acne and hirsutism. This is temporal recess of hairline. And this is the frontal alopecia, maybe associated with hirsutism. On physical examination, measure the blood pressure, measure the body mass index. Also, assess signs of insulin resistance, like obesity, hypertension, centripetal fat distribution. I can source the negligence, skin tags, examination of androgen sensitive skin areas like face, chest, abdomen, back, inner side of the thigh. Peripuperitoneal hirsutism with slow onset indicate primary hirsutism or non tumoral secondary hirsutism. A while late onset or rapid progression signs of realization or high levels of hormones may be due to tumors, like what, like adrenal tumor, or ovarian tumor, like adrenoblastoma, which is sertoli lytic cell tumor, hormone producing tumor, producing androgen, sertoli lytic cell tumor, or pituitary tumor adenoma, like prolactinoma. Okay. Doctor, this picture, the general characteristic is the sexual hair. Certain regions in the body, as I said, is, is under control. The hair here in these areas is under control of androgen. Especially the middle areas of the body, mostly the face, chest, areola, white line, buttocks, sacrum, inner thigh, external genitalia. And to detect the degree of hirsutism, we can follow the score or scale of Freeman and Gallery system and the modified one. They examined nine regions in the body, like to this picture. This is the nine regions we should examine for hirsutism. And for each area, we give a score one of four. Four is the, is the severest and one is the lowest, okay? According to the degree of hirsutism. For this nine region, then the sum of this score, if less than eight, we consider it normal. If from eight to 15, we consider it moderate to severe, okay? So this is the regions, as you see, the laps here, the upper arm, the chin, the side, especially the inner side of the side, the breast, the back, okay, the areola, and this is the sacral region and the back, and this is the external genitalia and the pubic hair. So there is nine regions should be examined, and for each region I'll give a score from one to four, according to the degree of hirsutism. At the end, I'll do some for all these nine regions. If I found that from 8 to 15, this means mild hirsutism. If more than 15, it is moderate to severe. Okay? If less than 8, we can consider it normal. From So, less than 8 normal. From 8 to 15, it is mild hirsutism. More than 15, it is moderate or severe. Okay, there is some disadvantage for this scale that 
it doesn't include the sideburns and the buttocks also may be affected by the focal hirsutism or ongoing use of cosmetic measures this is the picture show you the the Fermian and the Galway system modified one this is the nine region as I mentioned some prefer to use the term patient important hirsutism what is that to indicate symptoms significant enough to cause the patient distress regardless of the degree of physical finding maybe some patient has hirsutism in certain area cause distress to them okay while others have hirsutism in certain area they don't care about it so there is variability between patients about that that's why they call it patient important hirsutism okay should we do external examination for the genitalia maybe yes if there is virilizing symptoms and signs we can examine the external genitalia for clito clitoromegaly and how to detect the clitoromegaly if the crosswise width of the glands is greater than eight millimeter and the length of the hood is greater than 27.4 millimeter we can say clitoromegaly we can need pelvic ultrasound to diagnose ovarian tumor because we have realizing symptoms and signs so or a high level if we did serum androgen level and we found it very high we should do pelvic ultrasound to detect ovarian tumor secreting androgen like a rhinoplastoma or sertiolytic cell tumor also in cases of suggesting adrenal tumor abdominal ultrasound is important diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome according to modified Rotterdam criteria 2020 including chronic anovulation clinic or lab evidence fiber androgenism BCOS morphology in absence of any other pathology and polycystic ovarian morphology include number of follicle more than 20 it's a size in each fall in each ovary and the size of each follicle should be between two to nine millimeter and no dominant follicle in any ovary or ovarian volume of 10 million what about the investigation needed ask for some hormones level during the period from third to sixth day of the cycle could be early in the morning and the patient is fasting ask for FSH LH dehydrogandosterone sulfate delta 4 androstenedione, dione 17 hydroxyprogesterone steroid hormone binding globulin and sometimes you already need also for tsh and prolactin also according to the clinical finding you may need to do special tests like short dexamethasone suppression test or prolonged dexamethasone suppression test for Cushing syndrome and for late adrenogenital syndrome respectively also you may need adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulation test for late adrenogenital syndrome also do glucose tolerance test and HOMA index homeostasis model assessment for insulin resistance syndrome as regard the diagnosis of idiopathic hirsutism can be achieved by exclusion and 
approximately 15 to 50 percent of women suffering hirsutism belong to 80 percent hirsutism. The differential diagnosis between the different causes of hirsutism, also between the hirsutism and the hypertrichosis and the lanugo hair. Hypertrichosis means generalized excessive hair growth. But here it is not caused by androgen excess. And it is diffuse and present in area not dependent on androgen like arms and outer surface of the legs, lower legs. Hypertrichosis is often due to familial or scenic character and has prepubertal onset. Another difference. It may be the consequence of uh, excess glucocorticoids, the taking of certain drugs like phenytoin, like cyclosporin, or maybe due to some systemic disorders like anorexia nervosa, porphyria, porphyria or dermatomyositis or hypothyroidism. This is the hypertrichosis as you see in this picture in the legs. What about Lenugo hair? Lenugo hair is here in the picture. This is a thin, villous, non pigmented hair located anywhere on the body, as you see in this picture. What about treatment of hirsutism? Healthy lifestyle is important. Weight loss in obese patient is very important also. And we said before that weight loss is a tool increase sex hormone binding globulin that leads to decrease free testosterone so reduction of body weight itself is a line of treatment because it decreases the circulating free testosterone The first line treatment is oral contraceptive pills, combined pills. Digestogen inhibit the hypothalamic pituitary axis, while the estrogen stimulate the liver to increase sex hormone binding globulin formation. So, increase sex hormone binding globulin leads to decrease free testosterone. Okay. And the inhibition of hypothalamic pituitary axis decreases LH, decreases production of androgen by sickle cells. COC can be used in combination with other anti androgenic drugs like spironolactone, like cibotron acetate, like finasteride, like glutamide. Some anti androgenic drugs like spironolactone in a dose of 100 to 200 milligrams daily can be given the mechanism of action by blocking the androgen receptor. It has an effect in treatment of hirsutism, but it is slowly. It can be given with oral contraception, but take care if the patient planning for pregnancy, this is dangerous to be given because it may cause pseudohermaphroditism in male fetus. Okay, so shouldn't be given to patient not taking contraception. Okay. Finasteride, 2.5 milligram daily. This, the mechanism of action, it reduces the activity of 5-alpha reductase enzyme. But you should know it is not recommended in a child bearing age in a woman planning for pregnancy. Why? Because carry risk of ambiguous genitalia for the fetus. Another side effect important for finasteride is the hepatotoxicity. Flutamide also can be used for treatment of hirsutism in combination with combined oral pills but its use is limited 
because of significant hepatotoxicity and teratogenesis. Metformin, insulin sensitizer, used in PCOS in these patients to manage the hyperinsulinemia or insulin resistance and so decrease hirsutism, especially in adolescent PCOS. Adrenal hyperandrogenism can be treated by a small dose of corticosteroid like prednisone 5 to 10 milligram daily what about local and the cosmetic treatment i can give the patient local cream of certain drug called fluorinescine as in this picture fluorinescine act by inhibit the hair growth but it needs time so it needs at least eight weeks to start to appear its effect okay it is taken twice per day topical application but the problem is if you stop it hair growth resumes after discontinuation side effects may occur like acne, erythema, and burning. Also, the woman can use certain cream which remove the hair. Okay, like thioglycolates can be given or change the color of the hair by hydrogen peroxide. So, Thioglycolates is a chemical depletion. Is a chemical depletion. And this also not only used for hirsutism, also for hypertrichosis. Or we can use electrolysis, as in this picture, especially electrolysis for light colored hair or photoebulation for dark hair photoebulation as in this picture for dark hair this is by laser and this is another by laser also depilatory lasers this is one of the best really method for management of hirsutism cosmetic management okay Surgical treatment may be needed if there is tumor like ovarian tumor, like renoblastoma, serotonic cell tumor, as in this picture, excision of the tumor or adrenal tumor by excision also of the tumor. Ovariectomy may be needed in menopausal women in severe hyperandrogenism resistant to treatment. Lastly, you should know that treatment of hirsutism better to be multimodal therapy. I mean lifestyle change, physical hair removal by laser, by electrolysis, by any other me, and giving COC or anti-androgen drugs. All of this in this picture. So is multimodal therapy and you should know that hormonal therapy shouldn't start before menarche once hormonal therapy is initiated patient should be counseled that it takes six months at least to see the benefits of treatment and you should see the patient at interval every three to six months for any adverse effect also to see the response of treatment when the condition is stable you can see the patient annually thank you i'm dr alam musbah professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of medicine mansoura